Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Disney. Disney is partnering with a company called Value Act for protection from their investors. They don't want investors bothering them with difficult questions about why are you making everything woke. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Well, in September of 2023, the Wall Street Journal reported that Disney said they're going to invest $60 billion in their theme parks, their cruises that would take place over the next 10 years. Previously, they had invested $30 billion over the last 10 years. Yes, that is a significant increase. So where did this new focus on their theme parks come from? Why were they making this announcement? This announcement did kind of come out of the blue and a lot of people were wondering why did they even make this filing? Why did they make this public announcement saying they're going to spend $60 billion this way? This is also in the middle of Disney settling their deal, like literally in the middle of Disney settling their deal with Comcast to buy the one third of Hulu that they don't currently own. Disney has around $14 billion in cash right now. They are probably going to need to pay 10 to $15 billion for the part of Hulu that they don't currently own to Comcast. So why mention right now they need to spend $60 billion on their theme parks? Well, this did come out of the blue. It wasn't within the flow of things. It didn't really make sense. Now we find out that a new investor has come along called Value Act. Who is Value Act? Value Act is the white knight that's gonna save Disney from mean old Nelson Peltz. At least that's what Bob Iger thinks right now. But he could be right. It is possible Value Act could actually save Bob Iger from accountability on what they've been doing with all of the Disney brands and characters by making them woke. Nelson Peltz, of course, has been attacking Disney and saying, hey, we want to be on your board of directors. We want things reorganized the proper way at Disney. He's what you would call an activist investor, not an activist in the way that he wants to change the world and push social justice, an activist in the way that he wants companies to do what makes sense for them to start making money. So Bob Iger went and he found his own activist, a company called Value Act. Of course, Value Act seems to have agreement with Bob Iger about how they should run the business. This is coming from Axios Pro. Disney White Knight rides into the Tryan fight. Tryan is Nelson Peltz's company. Activist investor Value Act's move to amass a large stake in Disney is expected to help not hurt the company's efforts to thwart Tryan Partners' second campaign to seize seats on the board of directors and push for major changes. Why does it matter? The arrival of the San Francisco Activist Fund, that's Value Act, they're San Francisco kinds of people, to the Disney drama is seen as a positive for Disney, but it still turns up the heat on CEO Bob Iger and his effort to boost a sagging stock price. Value Act thinks that the theme parks are just absolutely wonderful. That's why Disney made a public statement saying we're going to focus on our theme parks because they want the support of Value Act. That is how these things work behind the scenes. This is what Value Act had to say about Disney's theme parks. Value Act believes Disney's theme parks and consumer products alone are worth the price it paid since the duo brings in around $10 billion a year. But the activist reckons that if you iron out the creases in the media segment, and make the company a little more slick, Disney's shares could be worth up to $190 each. Disney's current stock price is $94.21, which is up a little bit since they've been making recent announcements. In the past five days, Disney's stock is up 6.33%. Up is better than down. Value Act is actually correct. The theme parks are incredibly profitable for Disney, there really is no reason they shouldn't be spending money trying to expand their existing theme parks. This is not money they're going to spend, they've already announced, on anything risky like building a new theme park in Pakistan. That would be risky. Or even in Australia, that would be risky. This is just expansions to their existing theme parks. So from Hollywood Reporter, this just came out. Disney's turbocharging of the theme park business gathers pace with Frozen Land launch in Hong Kong. Somehow, Disney had an incredible success with Frozen. Frozen 1, over a billion dollars. Frozen 2 did like $1.4 billion, more money than Frozen 1 actually did. 
The sequel did great. For some reason, Disney took their eye off the ball and stopped focusing on the Frozen franchise because money isn't that important to Bob Iger. He's got more important things to worry about. But eventually they realized, oh, okay, let's just tell people we're going to make more Frozen movies. Now they've started on Frozen 3 and Bob Iger let it slip the other day. Oh, well, we might be working on Frozen 4, but we're not ready to talk about that right now. Of course, they're working on more Frozen movies. And of course, they should have been doing that years ago. Barbie was a huge success. Everyone knows that. But did you know that Frozen 2 actually did about as much business as Barbie did? So yes, Disney, of course, you should be making more Frozen movies. And of course, they should use that to push into theme parks because it's successful in the theme parks as well. People actually care about the Frozen franchise. They may not care about the Marvels, but they do care about Frozen for whatever reason. Even before Value Act invested in Disney, CEO Mason Morfitt had a friendship with Bob Iger, according to Bloomberg. Value Act's brand of active management is built not on running proxy fights, meaning trying to get control of the board, but on working closely with management on changes and boosting value, which Nelson Peltz does do as well. The only issue that Nelson Peltz has is when Nelson wants to do things that the board of directors doesn't want to do. And his stuff that he likes to do is very straightforward. It does create a lot of value for the investors, but companies don't always like to make the changes he wants to make. Value Act is also known for influencing large institutional investors. That is like BlackRock, State Street, big companies that hold multi billions of dollars worth of the stock. They do it behind the scenes to back their value creation thesis. That is crucial because if Nelson Peltz is going to fight with Bob Iger, Nelson Peltz wants those institutional investors to see things the way that he does as well. Now you can see why this is really a partnership that Bob Iger has with Value Act to try to protect all of the changes that Bob Iger has made in all of the brands at Disney to keep them woke. As far as Value Act is concerned, they don't seem to care if anything is woke. They like stuff being woke. They're from San Francisco. NBC's David Farber reported Wednesday that Morfitt is largely supportive of Disney's current strategy and has been in contact with Disney management. In fact, CNBC was saying the other day that Bob Iger is in regular conversations with the Value Act people. He's coordinating with them. It's pretty obvious. The size of Value Act's stake is still not known. Value Act has a $12 billion fund. Some percentage of it now is in Disney stock. We don't know how much it is. It seems like it's less than what Nelson Peltz has invested. Nelson Peltz's company listed in an SEC filing that its Disney stake is 32.8 million shares. The majority of the stock that Nelson Peltz has to work with at Tryon is the stock that Marvel CEO Isaac Perlmutter owns, and Isaac Perlmutter is not happy with how Bob Iger has been destroying Marvel and their other brands. And here's what analysts are saying. Value Act's entry into Disney is being seen by analysts as a white knight coming to help rather than another agitator stirring the pot. Quote, the appointment of a Value Act director would certainly make life much tougher for Nelson Peltz and easier for Bob Iger if he continues to seek multiple board seats. And if you look at Value Act's website, it's very straightforward. Our core values shape who we are, relationship and trust. We place great value on our relationship with current and former portfolio companies, as well as the institutional investor community. We always consider what is in the best interest of the company and all stakeholders. Stakeholders is really code word for woke. It didn't used to be, but it pretty much is now. Responsibility and long-term thinking. We believe in investing for the long-term and managing companies for the long-term. This requires the highest standards of integrity, a deep understanding of industry structure and business strategy, and a consideration of relevant social, ethical, and environmental issues. Wow, social, ethical, and environmental issues you can't even ask Bob Iger to find a better partner than that. Transparency and respect. Our team culture promotes openness, shared learning, and shared rewards. We succeed or fail together. We apply this same approach to working with our portfolio companies. Quote, and here's a key thing. 
I was expecting their focus to be on financial engineering and short-term opportunities. These kinds of things are what activist investors do when they say, hey, let me get involved with this company because they're not managing their assets very well. Why can't we just restructure it a little bit, lay some people off, sell some parts off, do things that make short-term and long-term financial sense, but that's not what Value Act is all about. Instead, throughout the engagement, I found them to be methodical and analytically oriented, much like a good product manager or CEO. Overall, I found we had much in common in terms of business perspective and the keys to driving value. Bob Iger has found himself a friend in the world of activist investors. He's found someone who is going to push on his side and help his narrative to succeed. It doesn't mean that Nelson Peltz won't be successful. It does mean that Nelson Peltz is less likely to be successful. If you're somebody who actually cared about the Marvel characters or Star Wars or anything else that Disney is in control of, I have to tell you this. It looks like that stuff is pretty much gone forever. I doubt Disney is going to be forced to make changes that make sense for the intellectual properties. Right now, Disney is being changed around to be focused on making money as a secondary priority to being woke. They will push the theme parks, which do make money. They will push the streaming service, which doesn't yet make money, but probably in a year or so will start to make money just because it's so huge. And the brands that everybody cares about the things that Nelson Peltz and Ike Perlmutter will push and risk money to try to make valuable again, Disney is not concerned with saving. All they want to do is continue to push their agenda and to keep investors away from making any sensible changes. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.